Mr. Bush, what Army modernization efforts are most critical to the Army fulfilling its roles as outlined in the NDS and why? Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Senator. I think I'll uh, start, and then if you, if you allow, I'd let General Richardson add in a bit from uh, Army operations concepts yes. requirement. I can tell you that the Secretary, uh, given China's the pacing threat, is focused particularly on uh, three areas, long-range fires, air and missile defense, and the network, all three of which uh, we believe are foundational to anywhere the Army fights, but in particular, improving capabilities in those areas are vitally important for fulfilling the Army's role in a potential contingency with China. Senator, I would, I would echo uh, that from Mr. Bush. Uh, those three priorities are, are critical. Uh, we've been experimenting, and we have been also watching the news of what's going on in, in, in Ukraine, and the, Ukraine and, what, and the Soviet Union correction, and Russia have Told, taught us a lesson. Number one, that our modernization priorities are correct. Long-range precision fires is critical. And as I think all of you have been briefed on, we have three aspects of the long-range critical, uh, long-range precision fires that's on track to be delivered in FY23. That is the extended long-range cannon, PRISM, and our hypersonics missiles. So as it relates to the Army prioritization, priorities and how it relates to what's going on in the world today, I do believe that we have our modernization priorities and they're on track. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bush, while the Army's fiscal year 23 budget request both maintains the readiness of the Army and maintains the modernization priorities of the Army of 2030, it does so with a largely flat budget. We've already mentioned this. And at the expense of enduring modernization, particularly those required for the Armored Brigade Combat Team modernization effort, as, my, as our ranking member has mentioned, how is the Army balancing risk in the current force to enable this prioritization? Uh, thank you, Senator. I think it's uh, from an equipping standpoint alone, I think, as I mentioned, the first thing we look at is industrial base to make sure we don't go too low to where should a contingency arise or more funding become available, those decisions can be reversed and we can pick things back up and move faster. So that's one way to mitigate risk. Um, the second way is to uh, be careful about and thoughtful about where we do add funding. Um, every year there's a tremendous amount of churn inside the Army just on new initiatives and new things being uh, wanting to be funded. Uh, we took uh, the process we just went through and the process we went through last year, uh, exceedingly careful look at anybody wanting to add something new in order to protect um, funding where it resides. So a second way we met, mitigate risk. And the other one is the many other things that the U.S. Army brings to the fight, which is better leadership, better training, better logistics, which while they can't overcome every uh, equipment difference, can make a big difference in terms of the overall combat effectiveness of Army units, as General Richardson was mentioning. Thank you. Um, but let's get back to the equipment. Colonel Grice, how is the reduction of procurement quantities of modernization capabilities such as the Abrams, Bradleys, and Paladins impacting the cost per unit? Chair Duckworth, um, we're managing that as we go through and develop our program each year. And for ABCT modernization, while we did take cuts, we're still achieving seven uh, modernized set V3 tanks in this budget in 23, and nine BCTs by FY27. Um, as we looked at those reductions to focus on modernization, um, we analyzed those costs, analyzed the programmatic impacts, and made the best decision we could to continue to focus uh, funding toward our modernization capabilities that have been discussed. Secretary Bush. Yes, ma'am. Um, so one thing to keep in mind, it varies by contract type. So some things we are in a fixed price contract environment where the cost of the item is the cost of the item. In other cases, there is range pricing depending on the quantities the Army's orders, which, as you pointed out, if we're at the low end of that pricing range, the unit quantities are higher. Uh, we seek to mitigate that also by trying to spread out orders so it's a, a level set of orders not going up and down with the defense industry so they can do their long lead parts ordering more efficiently. But there's no perfect solution to buying less sometimes does increase costs. Okay. Um, the Secretary of the Army describes the Army's role in the Pacific in part to sustain the joint force over vast distances by providing secure communications, established intra-theater distribution networks, and maintaining munition stockpiles as well as forward arming and refueling points 
This all gets to the importance of contested logistics. Mr. Bush, how does the fiscal year 23 budget invest in Army logistics capabilities, and, and what operations have we learned from, what lessons have we learned from operations in Europe? So, Senator, I'll start. I can answer the budget question and then let General Richardson talk about Europe, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so this budget does modestly increase funding for some areas of logistics. For example, tactical wheeled vehicles. If you look inside there, uh, the JLTV program, for example, is up by about a third this year. That's progress. Um, some of our other truck lines are also up slightly, but I, uh, you're right that overall there's a lot of, of level effort there. Uh, one area of increase is watercraft modernization. Uh, Pacific, in particular, the Army's relatively small but important uh, watercraft fleet uh, will be an important part of the uh, joint logistics capability we provide. Modernization funding for that is up modestly in this budget request as well. And Senator, as you mentioned, the Army has the specified role in Title X tasks uh, to support not only the Army, but all of the other services as it relates to fuel, as it relates to ammunition, the distribution, and the protection of our lines of communication. Um, obviously, the number one priority within the Army is, from a log contested logistics perspective is to set the theater. And some of the things, and we're learning a lot, and you've been briefed on sensor to shooter. I label it now sensor to shooter to sustainer. And those are some of the lessons that we learned. The lessons that I've learned personally is we need to take a better look at our, you've seen what's happening in, in Ukraine. And the lesson that we took at AFC is we really have to take a look at our requirements documents and look at reliability. Because if you have a reliable weapon system, you don't need as many parts. Uh, you need to look from a requirements perspective as well, you need to look at fuel and, and uh, the standards as well as maintainability. So that's one aspect that we've learned in applying it in our requirements documents today early on. The, the second uh, aspect is predictive logistics. We've got to be able to predict when, when our systems are going to fail, put sensors on them and have a common operating picture of one of those systems. That, that will free up the supply lines. And then lastly, we have to have an, a, an understanding, a common, underst common operational picture from the battalion all the way to the enterprise level. So when, we, when we're shooting ammunition or using gas or, or need fuel, we have the same common operating picture at, you know, at the battalion as you do back at the enterprise level. And they're able to push that uh, logistics forward. That was a big, uh, a large uh, aspect that we learned from the Ukraine fight. And some of the things that we're applying today is where we're going to the future. I just have concerns that this flat budget isn't going to allow us to meet some of these requirements. 